before i go ahead in the portion first we are in a chapter called we are in chapter number 2 of our portion that is residential status and scope of income assessees will be divided into resident and non resident and this is how scope of income will be determined because globally there are two principles of levy of tax they are principle of residence and principle of source if you are a resident then world income will be taxable and if you are a non resident then that country's will income will be taxable for example in india if you are a resident then you have to pay tax on world income and if you are a non resident then you have to pay tax on your indian income and that is what scope of total income is all about so we started first learning residential status once we learn residential status we can go and learn scope of total income in that we are doing assessee by assessee so the first assessee for whom we have studied residential status is individual till now only individual is over but as i am again and again telling you individual takes time the others will happen very fast in individual we started we said there are two steps step number 1 resident non resident step number 2 ror r nor in the step number 1 resident non resident we are given two conditions if you satisfy how many any one then you will become a resident what are the two conditions condition 1 182 days in the current year or condition 2 60 days in the current year 365 days in the last four years if you satisfy any one you become a resident other points to be noted i discussed with you like need not be continuous citizenship irrelevant only physical presence matters india's definition everything we discussed then we came to two exceptions where 60 365 is not applicable first citizen of india who is going outside for employment or as crew member of indian ship but for crew member cdc period will not be covered in your stay in india and second citizen of india or person of indian origin who is staying outside and is coming to india but for what purpose for the purpose of visit if you come for income then both conditions applicable if you come to visit then condition 2 not applicable only condition 1 and in that if your income exceeds 15 lakh rupees which income all incomes in india plus foreign income if controlled from india if that income exceeds 15 lakh then we will treat you as resident then we came to the additional conditions ror or nor only if answer to step 1 is resident again we have been given two conditions this time you have to satisfy both if you satisfy both then you will be treated as ror if you dissatisfy any one or if you dissatisfy both then you will be treated as r nor are we right are we correct yes what are the two conditions first 730 days in the last 7 years 730 days in the last 7 years and second in the last 10 years any 2 years minimum it can be higher but minimum 2 years you have to be a resident correct in that the 12365 ssc who is becoming resident only because of income exceeding 15 lakh rupees will always be treated as r and or that person will never be treated as ror and finally we said there are some people who are not a resident in any other country citizen of india who is not a resident in any other country that person will be treated as a resident for tax purpose in india if once again the income is exceeding 15 lakh rupees that's your residential status of individual sir how will indian government know what we are earning outside india superb question do you understand the question how will government of india come to know what you are earning outside india this is where international tax comes into picture when you come to ca final the very first chapter that i teach in ca final is a chapter called double taxation avoidance agreement double taxation avoidance agreement where it is possible that you are resident of one country and you are having income in another country take the example of naresh when we started today i told you that he is resident of india and he earned income in new zealand we took that as an example that means india will apply principle of residence and take tax and new zealand will apply principle of source and take tax can i say on the same income you have to pay tax twice to save you from that double taxation 
both countries will enter into an agreement there will be agreements we call it treaty agreement between two governments to give you relief from double taxation a very very important topic of ca final direct tax double taxation avoidance agreement in that agreement both governments agree to reduce your tax liability and they also exchange information to each other to answer that doubt of junai dubai government will tell india what you have earned in dubai and indian government will tell uae whatever you have earned in india that country's government will send that information to us that happens under agreements between the two governments so if the question is how will you come to know there will be agreements between governments which will help us to give information to each other okay and second you all have under there is one more doubt you all have understood that there can be foreign income which is controlled from india so there is indian company which has a branch in dubai and has sent someone to work in dubai that is foreign income controlled from india which we took into consideration for the purpose of our 15 lakh criteria the question is can there be indian income controlled from foreign yes there can be indian income controlled from foreign matlab for example there is an australian company which has got a branch office in india and it is sending some employees to work in india that means can i say business will be controlled from australia and income will be generated in india this is indian income story over this is once the income is earned in india it is indian income whether you are resident or non resident doesn't matter principle of source will apply you have to pay tax even if you are non resident you have to pay tax understood so once it is indian income irrespective of where it is controlled from if the income is an indian income everybody has to pay tax whether you are resident or non resident is that clear understood all right shall we go ahead to the next part sorry ha huh? now if you ask ke wo indian income hai kya then the answer is yes it is indian income why because it is arising in india people working in embassies consulates diplomats we call them is that indian income yes so no taxable or not taxable will depend no is it possible that we give them exemption under section 10 it is indian income but we have made it exempt it is possible no so whether tax will come or not come that depends on whether it is taxable income or exempt income but right now the question is whether it is indian income or foreign income what is the answer to that question it is indian income is that understood understood is there any problem with the network or lag in voice or anything like that one second wait to your question ha नहीं नहीं सो नॉट ऑर्डिनरी रेसिडेंट इज स्टिल अ रेसिडेंट नो इवन इफ नॉट ऑर्डिनरी रेसिडेंट इज द एस स्टिल अ रेसिडेंट एंड वंस यू आर अ रेसिडेंट मीन्स सम ऑफ योर फॉरेन इनकम्स विल बी टैक्सेबल इन इंडिया सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ऑर्डिनरी एंड नॉट ऑर्डिनरी दैट आई विल एक्सप्लेन टू यू इन द स्कोप ऑफ टोटल इनकम वेन आई विल आंसर योर फर्स्ट डाउट योर सेकेंड डाउट विल बी ऑटोमेटिकली आंसर ओके सो वेट just till the completion of this class automatically you will get your answer okay so what is the difference between they are what is the similarity between them similarity kya hai what is the similarity in citizen and pio sometimes it is possible that if a person is born in india so you can be citizen and pio both a person who is born in india can be both a person whose father or mother were born in india can be citizen pio both but they are two different things all together citizenship 
based on your passport or aadhar card that you are holding and pio means you have shifted abroad forever you have got no connection with india you have become nri but your parents or grandparents were born in india so forever you will remain pio samjhe there is no similarity only where is the question of what is the difference is that clear okay and as far as difference between ordinary and not ordinary is concerned when we do scope of total income every word about it will become clear yes moin you have something more to say no 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 first that person has to become resident but you have to like stay in one position 60 nahi 120 for 15 lakh criteria it is 120 no 6365 is not applicable 12365 is applicable 12365 correct only then you become resident if you don't fulfill 12365 then you will become non resident story is over if you fulfill 12365 then you will become resident and no need to check anything you are not ordinarily resident we have to just only check 12365 that's one criteria or second if you are not a resident in any other country then you are a resident in india only these two you have to check 365 last four last four yes 365 is always last four okay chalo shall we go ahead second assessee you understand the numbering too for individual we wrote one so now we are going to the second assessee do we know huf is also a person liable to pay tax under income tax yes huf will also be divided into step number 1 what will be step number 1 resident and non resident and resident will further be divided into ror r nor in step number 2 before i go ahead let me at this stage clarify that individual and huf i told you before i again say this when i started residential status i made a chart i said individual huf and others individual huf are the only two assessees where you have step number 2 in individual i have taught you in huf i will teach in all other assessees it is only this much resident or non resident resident or non resident in that case sukaina your doubt will not come only no resident in uh, world income and non resident indian income when will your doubt come only in case of individual huf where we have this further classification and that answer will come when i teach you scope of total income so what is the step number 1 for classification of huf we will classify huf into resident or non resident and when will we perform step number 2 Only if the result of step one is resident. Very good. So answering these questions indicate that you are also understanding what I am talking. Now, do you have little brain? Little, ah, huh? not too much. Little only required. Little. That in case of individual, it's a natural person. You can check where I am. Where is my location? Right, which place is my location right now? Is my location in India? Outside India? Where is it? My present location. is in india couple of students of our classroom present location is ua correct or no but do you understand huf or for that matter company firm aop they are all artificial persons <coughs> we cannot check where huf is physically located there is no physical location of huf or firm or company do you understand what i am saying in case of it is very very easy you are going to go and check where is the control and management of the hf control and management means what is the place of decision making where yes 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 i repeat i repeat in case of huf we cannot check physical presence that you have understood yes sir yes we have to check control and management control and management means the place of decision making where are decisions of the huf taken business decisions other decisions 
where are they taken that will decide so you don't have to check number of days you don't have to check 182 60 365 730 nothing is applicable all you are required to check is where are the decisions of the huf taken the place of control and management what are the possibilities possibility one all decisions of the huf are taken in india that means the control and management is wholly completely fully in india all decisions are taken in india for example my huf i am the karta all the decisions of my huf i am taking in mumbai my son will become 3 years old in april if i ask him also no this much tax he also knows he will also be able to answer what is this huf what do you think is this huf what do you think is the answer that's it you don't have to check anything else answer is here wholly in india you are a resident if the control and management is wholly completely fully all decisions taken in india resident very good by the way not very good because as i told you a 3 year old kid will also be able to answer this next question if the control and management of the huf is wholly outside india all decisions of the huf are taken outside india no decision is taken in india all the decisions are taken outside india but what if i tell you non resident if fully outside india then non resident but again i know most of you all gave the right answer but please don't mind the reality is even a 3 year old kid will be able to answer this question okay so if you say that wholly in india is resident and wholly outside india is non resident honestly speaking you have not done anything great the real greatness lies in answering this question that the control and management of the huf is partly in india partly outside india some decisions taken in india some decisions taken outside india little in india little outside india little little thoda thoda kurch kurch ए मैडम मैडम एक मिनट एक वन मिनट टिल द टाइम यू आर इन स्टेप नंबर वन नो सेइंग ऑर्डिनरी और नॉट ऑर्डिनरी इज नॉन सेंस रॉन्ग एब्सोल्युटली रॉन्ग सो दैट इज डेफिनेटली नॉट द राइट आंसर यू कैन ओनली चूज बिटवीन दिस मच नो इट इज पॉसिबल नो 100 decisions taken in india 500 decisions taken outside india 500 decisions taken in india 100 decisions outside india 99% decisions in india 1% decision outside india 99% outside india 1% in india ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i told you these two answers will be given by kids small babies 3 year olds you as chartered accountancy students are required to give this answer and it is okay if you don't know this because you are here to learn but after today remember that let me speak one line let me speak one line that will clarify everything that will clarify everything even if one decision of huf is taken outside india even if one decision is taken sorry my bad i i correct my statement even if one decision of huf is taken in india in india even if one decision of huf is taken in india then irrespective of where is everything else done the huf will be treated as resident that means can i say wholly in india resident partly in india resident the only time when huf will become non resident is when all the decisions are taken outside india when all the decisions are taken outside india understood so you don't have to check anything okay step 1 is over there is no exception no 60 no 365 no 182 nothing 
वन डिसीजन ऑल्सो इन इंडिया यू आर अ रेसिडेंट इच यू ओवर फिनिश खत्म टाटा फिनिश बाय बाय अ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन श्लोक इट इज ऑलवेज गुड टू बिकम नॉन रेसिडेंट बिकॉज देन ओनली इंडियन इनकम इज टैक्सेबल एंड फॉर एच यू एव टू बिकम नॉन रेसिडेंट वॉट इज द क्राइटेरिया नहीं नहीं टू बिकम नॉन रेसिडेंट ऑल डिसीजन आउटसाइड इंडिया इफ ऑल डिसीजन आर टेकन आउटसाइड इंडिया कैन आई से एच यू एफ विल बिकम नॉन रेसिडेंट स्टूडेंट इज आस्किंग सर इन दैट केस सर इन दैट केस द एच यू एफ शुड द मैनेजमेंट शुड गो आउटसाइड इंडिया आउटसाइड इंडिया टू टेक ऑल द डिसीजन करेक्ट और नो what will you save tax but will you incur traveling cost yes. foreign trips are not cheap first thing so you have to factor that also i understand that you use your brain thinking that it is good to become non resident by shifting the management outside india but for shifting the management outside india you will need to incur expenditure you will need to take some home or office outside india will that also result in some expense and the main factor what if your incomes are uh, so supposingly i have my huf my huf is running a coaching class my income is in india indian tax laws i cannot teach to american or british students now i can teach indian taxation law only to indian students so even if i take the decision outside india the income is getting generated in india principle of source will apply even if my huf becomes non resident india will still take tax so it won't make sense to do that but in case i have foreign income it is possible that i have foreign business then yes it's a very good tax planning idea tell your management to shift outside india and take decisions over there save tax against that there will be some expenditure that you will incur for staying abroad see what is beneficial if it is beneficial yes you do have that option okay is that clear and as far as determination of where the decisions have taken place assessing officer is not going to come to your house and check on a daily basis but he will collect evidences if you have done any kind of transaction in india if you have done any communication with anyone in india if you have visited any of your clients offices in india if you have visited any of your suppliers offices in india they will collect evidence on the basis of phone records cctv records on the basis of that if they find out anything is done in india and you have given false information then they will treat you a resident they will take tax also and for giving false information there will be interest penalty prosecution also so they will not come and check where your decisions if your question is sir how government will come to know they will not come and check they will ask you what are you you are a resident or non resident if you say i am resident that means you are honest you are willing to pay tax if you say i am non resident they will investigate and if found false then tax interest penalty jail everything will happen everything will happen okay so finally how do you decide whether hf is resident or non resident if all the decisions are taken outside india then and if any one decision is also taken in india then resident, resident. and then we go to step 2 what do we decide in step 2 please this time don't don't disappoint me please 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 this time don't disappoint me when will you do this that means listen if the step number 1 answer is non resident you stop there and you don't perform this step only if answer to step number 1 is resident you will perform this step step number 2 correct this is a little illogical a little stupid a little weird nonsense bakwas wahiyat mandan potan durantam this is a little stupid but this is what they have read whose residential status you are determining by the way whose residential status is being determined hf, HUF. so we checked control and management of whom HUF. hf control and management so here also we should check whom HUF. hf but unfortunately 
what they say is if the karta karta means the head of the family head of the huf who is going to be an individual huh if the karta the head of the family who is an individual if the karta is ror the huf will also become ror hello maybe there is some network issue at your end if the karta can you hear me now yes sir we can hear if the karta is ror how do you determine whether the karta is ror 730 days in last 7 years and 2 out of last 10 years you are a resident are you following yes if the karta is ror the huf will also become ror means for step number 1 of huf you have to check control and management of the huf for step number 2 of huf you have to check not the huf you have to check the karta that's the nonsense yeah absolute nonsense that means if karta is r n o r then what will the huf become very good very intelligent very clever if karta is non resident then hf will be check that that has happened in india because if that had happened outside india then we will never perform only our step number 2 beautiful answer given by whichever two students spoke beautiful answer but you have still not given me the answer give me the answer so that we have checked and then only we are performing step 2 so and why not non resident because if the huf was non resident this step only will not be done the fact that we are doing step number 2 means one thing is clear that the huf is resident resident and if the karta is ror then only huf will become ror otherwise the huf will become r n o r be clear about this this is one area where you can go wrong where you can go wrong focus please focus i'll repeat i'll repeat first step first step everybody is clear you have to decide whether huf is resident or non resident how will you decide that on the basis of control and management if the control and management is wholly in india resident partly in india resident that means if wholly outside india then non resident no problem then for huf we have to decide whether it is ordinary or not ordinary for this purpose we will check whom karta karta can fall in any one of the three categories karta can be ror rnor or non resident if karta is ror very easy huf will also become ror if karta is rnor very easy huf will also become rn if karta is non resident this is where in over excitement if you are doing everything fast 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 in over excitement you can and you will go wrong in over excitement if karta is non resident that does not mean huf is non resident because if huf was non resident then we will stop at step 1 we will not do only our step 2 we are doing our step 2 are we doing step number 2 that means our answer to step number 1 was resident our answer to step number 1 was resident our answer to step number 1 was resident and if the karta is non resident then huf cannot become ror then it has to become r and over so is this last point understood this point i know everybody understood this point you understood but is the last point understood if karta is non resident huf will become r and over because resident it has already become due to control and management you just have to decide ordinary or not ordinary and it will be treated as not ordinary ordinary it will become only if 
करता इज ऑल्सो इफ करता इज ऑल्सो आर ओ आर अंडरस्टूड दैट्स रेजिडेंशियल स्टेटस ऑफ एच यू एफ इन दिस दिस वन एरिया वेर यू कैन गो रॉन्ग बी केयरफुल अबाउट दिस फिनिस्ड सो डिड आई टेल यू इंडिविजुअल विल टेक अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम बट अदर्स विल गेट ओवर वेरी फास्ट कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन येस जुनेद Yes. Is this clear? First. Yes, sir. Is this clear? Yes. Repeating the last complicated point for Junaid, but it will help everyone else also in the class. Answer what I am asking you. We are doing step number two for HUF. That means first of all, have we finished our step number one? Yes. Sir. Yes. What was answer to our step number one? then only we perform step 2 otherwise we don't perform only step 2 then only we perform step 2 otherwise we don't perform correct that means the huf has become resident 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 you just have to decide ordinary or not ordinary non resident is not the answer once you are in this step that means non resident cannot be the answer non resident cannot be the answer what are the only two answers possible for huf now r o r or r n o r is that clear because this will decide whether you have understood everything else once we are in step 2 the only answer possible is r o r or r n o r which answer is not possible and not applicable now junaid come on you, once we are performing step number 2 that means what are the only two possible answers now you are mute and which answer is not possible for sure non resident so what are the only options ror or rnor ror will take place only if karta is also ror and in both the other cases it will be rnor now clear non resident is no longer an answer if non resident was your answer then this step will not happen only if you are doing this step that means non resident is not applicable now clear okay and and other than this there is one more doubt the doubt is sir if karta is non resident how is second step applicable please understand karta can be in india only for 10 days yes devika tell me yes or no karta was in india for 10 days yes so what is the karta status once once you are for 10 days less than 60 means nothing to be checked you are non resident is it possible that during those 10 days he took some decisions of huf in india so karta is non resident but huf is resident correct and which which category resident but not ordinarily resident clear everyone very good let's go to the next assessee first of all one very very good news shubh samachar good news nalla varta good news shubh samachar are you with me from now onwards there will not be any ordinary or not ordinary resident there will only be resident and non resident first thing second thing all the remaining assessees that means firm aop boi firm will always include llp an artificial juridical person common rule only company is separate and as far as local authority is concerned please listen please listen local authority means municipal corporation government at the local level it can it can never be non resident it is always going to be resident only you don't have to check anything local authority is always going to be resident only okay so there is no residential status of 
local authority it is always resident anyways municipal corporation very rare how what is the possibility that municipal corporation of greater mumbai has got foreign income so for local authority it is not relevant for all other assessees for all other assessees first of all the only breakup is resident and non resident that's it there is no further category nothing called ordinary nothing called not ordinary nothing what is the only breakup here resident and non resident, and non -resident. correct and once again can i say just like huf just like huf there cannot be physical presence so what did we check for huf control and management ladies and gentlemen boys and girls the good news is the rules are absolutely same so if the control and management is only in india what do you have as your answer resident if the control and management is wholly outside india then what's your answer non resident and if the control and management is partly in india partly outside india then what's your answer in other words even if one decision one decision one decision one decision one decision is taken in india it will be resident can i say this is same as huf yes sir tell me yes or no this is same as huf yes sir first second no step two that means over i could have come here one second along with huf i could have also merged form llp aop ajp everything here and in step 2 told you that this is applicable only to HOF, other people it is not applicable. That is also possible. But then you can take this as a revision of HUF also. Is this clear? In other words, can I say that HUF firm AOPBY artificial juridical person, even if one decision is taken in India, it will be resident and if all decisions are taken outside India, it will be non-resident. And for HUF, there is going to be further classification into ROR and our NOR based on the status of the karta. Clear? Finished? Finished? Did I tell you individual will take time, the others will not take time? Live proof. We are left with only one assessee, which is the only assessee left now because three we have merged here. And local authority, I told you already that it will always be resident. There is no discussion only. Only one assessee left that is company correct company will be indian company or foreign company how does this decision or how is this decision taken how do you decide whether it is indian company or foreign company registration any company registered in india will be indian company any company registered outside india will be foreign company you remember that indian company close your eyes ignore everything always resident all the decisions taking place outside india still indian company will be resident once your company is incorporated in india a company like Reliance Industries Limited or Tata Steel Limited or Vedanta. You have heard of Vedanta? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That owner of Vedanta, Mr. Anil Agarwal, he majorly stays outside India. He stays in London. It is possible that all the decisions of the company are taken outside, outside India. But this company will still be treated as resident it is indian company so it will be treated as resident that means can i say place of control and management is irrelevant yes and as far as foreign company is concerned foreign company means where is it incorporated outside, outside india if it's poem 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 Poetry, poetry. What is poem called in Malayalam? Poetry. 
अच्छा इट इज कॉल्ड कविता ऑन हिंदी ऑल्सो इट इज कॉल्ड कविता सी लाइफ इज सो सिंपल इट इज कॉल्ड कविता ओके आई ऑल्सो हैड अ फ्रेंड कॉल्ड कविता वेन वी वर स्टडिंग फॉर सी वी वर स्टडिंग टूगेदर वी वर वेरी हैप्पी ऑल्सो टूगेदर देन वन डे सी गॉट मैरिड टू समन एल्स दैट इज हाउ इट वर्क सी ए दैट इज वॉट सी ए इज ऑल अबाउट जनरली इट विल बी मैरिड टू समन एल्स ओके बिकॉज बाई द टाइम शी गॉट मैरिड आई वॉज स्टिल परस्यूइंग सी ए ओके आई डोंट इवन नो वेट शी इज नाउ एंड एनी वेज दिस इज नॉट दैट कविता लेट्स नॉट टॉक अबाउट दैट कविता लेट्स फोकस ऑन दिस कविता दिस इज नॉट दैट दिस इज प्लेस ऑफ इफेक्टिव मैनेजमेंट प्लेस ऑफ इफेक्टिव मैनेजमेंट इफ योर पोयम इज इन इंडिया यू विल बी ट्रीटेड एज अ रेजिडेंट अदरवाइज बाई डिफॉल्ट जनरली अ फॉरन कंपनी कॉमन सेंस फॉरन कंपनी विल बी ट्रीटेड एज अ नॉन रेसिडेंट सो इंडियन कंपनी विल बी रेसिडेंट फॉरन कंपनी विल बी नॉन रेसिडेंट इंडियन कंपनी इज रेसिडेंट फॉरन कंपनी इज नॉन रेसिडेंट विच इज दी ओनली सर्कमस्टेंस और सिचुएशन वेर अ फॉरन कंपनी विल बी ट्रीटेड एज अ रेजिडेंट वेन इट्स प्लेस ऑफ इफेक्टिव मैनेजमेंट इज इन इंडिया इफ द प्लेस ऑफ इफेक्टिव मैनेजमेंट इज इन इंडिया ओके एज फार एज द मीनिंग ऑफ प्लेस ऑफ इफेक्टिव मैनेजमेंट इज कंसर्न एट इंटरमीडिएट लेवल ऑल यू आर रिक्वायर्ड टू नो इज बिग डिसीजन ऑफ बिजनेस बिग बिजनेस डिसीजन आर टेकन इन इंडिया नाउ यू विल से सर हाउ डू यू डिफाइन वेदर अ डिसीजन इज बिग और स्मॉल फॉर दिस देर वॉज अ सर्क्यूलर रिलीज बाई सी बी रिटी दे रिलीज दैट दिस मच पोर्सन ऑफ योर प्रॉफिट should be earned in india if you have got 2000 employees then this much percentage of your employees should be in india they laid down a criteria that any company which is fulfilling these many criteria that poem will be treated as poem in india that was a circular released by cbrt for the purpose of international tax syllabus this is not applicable in ca intermediate this is not applicable even in ca final direct tax only in ca final if you take elective paper international tax you are required to learn or read because that is an open book paper you don't have to learn it you are required to read that circular on poem otherwise that poem is not taught even to ca final students till the time you understand in rough in short big major decisions are taken in india then it will be a resident see listen you all are in learning stage can i say the companies are already doing business a foreign company which is already doing business knows about this so foreign companies for all practical purposes they make sure that the poem does not come in india because if their poem does not come in india they will become non resident and they don't have to pay tax in india except indian income of course indian income will be taxable google facebook earning anything in india they have to pay tax but foreign income will not be taxable so for all practical purposes indian companies remain resident and foreign companies remain non resident but on paper if they fulfill the poem criteria which was given in the cbrt circular that means foreign company will also be treated as resident and indian company is always resident you don't even have to use your brain even if you have one we will use it later so indian company will always be resident and foreign company only if major decisions are taken in india and once again as i have been continuously telling you the further break up of ordinary and not ordinary does not exist here that is applicable only to which assessees individual and huf and with this ladies and gentlemen what if i tell you that we here by are done with the first part of our second chapter what is the heading of our second chapter title of our second chapter residential status and scope of income scope of income i explained in advance that resident non resident will decide your scope in that what's the difference between ordinary and not ordinary which is the doubt of one of the students that will be fully explained in the scope of total income part but at this stage we can conclude that assessy by assessy we have now decided what is tax residency being nri or non nri for immigration purposes is one thing and being a resident or non resident for tax purpose is another thing being citizen of india or a foreign citizen is one thing and being tax resident is another thing you can be an australian cricketer or an african cricketer or a west indies cricketer you can be any one of them who is a foreign citizen or foreign national that's one thing but tax residency will depend on your physical 
presence. And once you determine the residential status of the SSA, what can be your conclusion? Resident or non-resident? Resident or non-resident? On the basis of that, you will be able to decide which income is taxable in India, which income is not taxable in India. Only on the basis of that, you will be able to decide. And that will help us in finishing the two things that are left in your syllabus. What are the only two things that I have to teach? Income and tax. If I teach you this much, portion will get over. See, in the third lecture itself, I have finished almost everything. Only two things are left. Income and tax. Income computation cannot be done unless and until you classify the SSE into resident and non-resident. Okay. One last note if you wish to write. Writing in your brain is more important than writing on the notebook. If the question is silent, you know, question is telling you compute the total income of the SSE. And in the question, they have given some incomes of India, some incomes of foreign. Uh, if it is non-resident, only the Indian income will be taxable. Yes or no? And if it is a resident, then both will be taxable, Indian income and foreign income. If the question is silent, that means the SSE is resident. And in case of individual HUF, you can take it as ROR also. That means if the question is silent, you have to make a tax payment on all the incomes. That means if your SSE is non-resident, the question will tell you that the SSE is non-resident or the question can give you number of days. You have to first determine whether SSE is resident or non-resident and then decide the taxability of income. So income computation cannot be done without knowing residential status and scope of total income have we understood this now to really gauge our talent and to understand whether we have in reality followed the things that are being taught in class or no for the first time in the third lecture we are for the first time i am going to be doing with you questions in class i already told you that i want to cover all exhaustive questions that if you do this much you don't need to do anything else and we are going to open the textbook also only when we are doing the question First of all, I have already sent the soft copy of the six chapters which are ready till now. Have you all received the soft copy of those six chapters? Some of you all may have taken the printouts also. And anyways, as I have already told you, once the full book is ready, whoever wants the hard copy, I will just the printing charges, nothing else. I will just let you know and I will send that book also to you. Don't worry about that also. But for those who don't have the PDF and the book both, don't worry. I have got all facilities in life. So this is chapter 2 in the textbook and questions are starting on page number 9. The first question that I am doing with you of the 200 questions, more than 200, 250 questions that I plan to solve with you in course of my batch. First time I am doing with you a question which is on page number 9. So even if you don't have the textbook with you, at least on my screen you can find can you see the question? Is the question readable? Is the font size good enough that you are able to read the question on screen? Some of these questions are solved questions. Some of these questions are unsolved questions. As far as the unsolved questions are concerned, we will solve them properly on our notepad. So the screenshots will cover the solutions also. And as far as the solved questions are concerned, we will discuss the question and the solution is already there in the textbook. So that we get chance to cover more and more questions we can consume less timing in copying and writing and we can do more questions in the time that we save so today we are starting questions if you are writing simultaneously with me i have got no objection on a condition that if i ask you for example question one i ask you who is the assessee everybody has to participate mr x i ask you when did he come to india you have to tell me the date i ask you when did he leave india you have to tell me the date you have to continuously answer the question that will only serve the purpose of solving questions in class. Otherwise, there is no point of solving questions. Question solving means full participation because question solving will, will decide. We are learning residential status since 9.30 in the morning. Whether we have learnt it properly, effectively, efficiently or no, without doing this, you will not realize. Okay. And one help I will need when we do questions. Some student of the class will have to volunteer. For what? To read the question loudly for the class though it is already open but someone has to read it because I have to talk continuously continuously 
इट गिवस टू मिनट ब्रेक टू माई थ्रोट ऑल्सो सो क्वेश्चन नंबर वन पेज नंबर नाइन एनी स्टूडेंट ऑफ द्लास हु इज बिलिंग टू हेल्प मी ऑन द रीडिंग पार्ट ओके मोहिन क्वेश्चन नंबर वन म्यूट हो के यू कैन रीड ट्वेंटी वन very simple and basic question what is the date of entry and what is the date of exit okay how should your presentation work you should always write like this at the top name of the assessee in bracket this is your applicable py and why and what are you solving what are you solving what is the question asking you to do what is the question determination of residential status that is what you are solving tell me yes or no yes sir so that should also be your heading what are the two conditions to decide residential status of an individual condition 1 182 days in the current year condition 2 60 days in the current year and 365 in the last four years whether the first condition or the second condition first thing that you will have to check is the stay of the ssc during the year 21 22 182 or 60 first step is always to target your previous year 21 22 previous year 21 22 correct because this is the first question i am doing it in a very basic manner okay after today you will not do it this is like babies you won't do it like this but first question so i am treating you like a baby tell me he came to india first time on first july so his number of days of april please come on i said i said he came to india for the first time on july no first july no so what is his number of days of april yes please may june july he came on first will you count first he came on afternoon but that data part let me be clear about that part also that data part is applicable only for somebody who is traveling regularly if he has come once and gone once you ignore the uh, timing part and directly focus on i and i already told you at the time of my explanation also you ignore that point altogether i just told you for knowledge purposes whenever you are solving anything the incoming day and outgoing day you have to include both okay that data part is applicable only for frequent travelers so what will you take for july 31 then continue very easy then august september for that you should also know uh, that which month has got 30 which month has got 31 that is also required to do ca october november December, December. He left on thirty. So how can it be thirty-one? He left on thirtieth December. Do you see this also or no? Or you are so sir? I am not asking how many days are there in December. I am asking Mr. X stayed for how many days? We all know there are thirty-one days in December. Legends are born in December. We all know that. My question was. How many days Mr. X has stayed? That is the question. So thirty we are taking, no? Thirty-one is not the answer. Thirty, and of course I am saving time here 
बिकॉज ही हेज ऑलरेडी लेफ्ट सो जैन फेब मार्च आई एम नॉट राइटिंग इंडिविजुअल एक बात बताओ लिसन लिसन टू मी लिसन टू मी दिस इज नो नॉन सेंस दैट वी आर डूइंग वी आर ओनली किलिंग टाइम वेन यू विल सॉल्व दिस सम इन एग्जाम यू विल डायरेक्टली से जुलाई ऑगस्ट सेप्टेबर अक्टूबर नवंबर डिसंबर यू विल नॉट इवन राइट दी अदर मंथ because we are not interested what period he was outside india we are interested what period he was in india so add these days and tell me what is his number of days in india are you sure so i am not checking 3 into 6 180 and 3 183 once you have stayed in india for 183 days that means you are At least answer to step one is clear that the assessee is resident. And if the assessee is resident, then we have to go and perform step number two. Supposingly, supposingly this was not one eighty three days. This was only thirty eight days. Then our question is over here itself. Assessee is non-resident. But if the answer is resident, then we have to go and check additional conditions. Yes or no? if you observe the question carefully he comes to india do you observe carefully he comes to india for the first time when first of july first time that means can i say before today he has never stayed in india last 4 years he has not stayed in india last 7 years he has not stayed in india last 10 years he has not stayed in india that means can i say if you go and check last 7 years it is zero has he satisfied 730 days no last 10 years is also zero by the way for ror you have to satisfy both any one is also dissatisfied there also you can stop correct or no in the additional conditions it is both no and therefore what is your con conclusion The assessee is R N O R. The assessee is R N O R. The assessee is R N O R. Is that understood? Very easy, very basic question. Questions are already there in the textbook, and as far as the answers are concerned, you can always uh, take the screenshots at the end. So I cannot wait for you to copy here. We cannot unnecessarily kill precious time of the class. We need to focus on the question. Let's go ahead. Question number two. Can you continue reading, please? If you get tired, let me tell uh, tell me. Ah, uh, I'll I'll appoint someone else. Uh, uh. Mr. X is in India for three hundred days. This is correct. For another twenty-one twenty-one. He stayed in uh, in this year twenty-one year under. Uh, determine his residency status for the previous year twenty-one twenty-one. Okay, that means very easy question. You have been given current year stay, and you have been given, I think, last ten years also. You can see ten years stay is given to you here very clearly. given to you here and what is the question asking you determine residential status in the first question in fact it was difficult because first you had to determine the stay of 21 22 in the second question second question once again what is the name mr x acha by the way have you understood the format correct and also the heading what are you going to write as heading determination of residential status it is only about the presentation if you write properly like this you score better than other people so whatever is the question see like in accounts also question tells you no prepare final accounts so you write no profit and loss account for the year ended 31st march whatever or the balance sheet as on whatever date it it improves the presentation and thus you score better marks over here no problem yes okay so please tell me question number 2 what is his stay of 21 22 that clearly is given to you in the question 300 days once you have crossed 182 that means you don't have to use your brain at all what's your answer to step number 1 resident if your answer to step number 1 is resident then you have to perform one more step step number 2 what do you decide in that ROR or NOR? What do you check? First check. Last seven years. I think they have already given you the data. Last seven years. 
we also decided that seven years that is why we wrote the years also so if you have to check four years by chance for 63 65 so which four years we know these four years for seven years for 10 years we wrote all the data did we so can i say as far as the last seven years are concerned you have to check this much come on so tell me what is the total of last seven years 300 350 50 50 50 last seven years 300 350 50 50 50 what is the total 800 days that means is the first additional condition satisfied if this was less than 730 i can stop the question huh? because in additional conditions you have to satisfy both both so if this was less than 730 we will stop here are you following and then what do you check last 10 years in last 10 years what do you need to be any two years you have to be resident let's come and have a check last 10 years 2021 0 can i say non-resident 1920 very clear answer resident that means we got one we want only two if it is more than two great we want only two what about 1819 non resident what about 1718 you want you can continue further but it is not required the minimum requirement is residence in two years has the assessee fulfilled that requirement that means can i say the assessee is resident in how many years which are the two years 1920 and 1718 therefore minimum two years done so is the 730 condition fulfilled is the two residents out of 10 fulfilled and therefore the assessee is resident and ordinarily resident do you realize once you know the rules what are the rules 182 63 65 uh, 730 2 out of 10 years once you know the rules then solving sums is very easy these sums can come as subjective questions also or they can come in mcq mcq more likely because as far as subjective part is concerned it is only 42 marks no 30 percent 18 marks will go away out of 60 marks direct tax in 42 there are big chapters like business profession uh, chapter like capital gains salary income does not come in ca final so intermediate is the only place where they can ask so they want to ask big questions on those topics so these small topics like residential status scope of total income exempt income they end up finding place in your mcqs but for mcq also you need to know the provision no without knowing the provision you will never be able to do this i hope you are understanding okay very good Shall we go to third question? Please. Ha, read. Okay. Thank you, Sukaina. There is a lot of disturbance around you. There are children playing, there are vehicles moving. So, request anybody who does not have noise around to read from now onwards. First, nahi, this question I think we have all read and understood. Okay. Question is understood. Question is asking you to solve what? What is the required part of the question? That you solve this and you will get marks. Determine the residential status for two years this time asking. They are asking you AY 21-22 as well as 22-23. Normally a CA question cannot ask like this. Because they can ask you only your exam assessment year. But if there is no amendment, what if I tell you last year residential status and current year residential status is same. So whatever you are doing for this year, same rule you can apply for last year also. Can I say one by one we will have to do, we can't do it together. So let's do this. Let's do this. 
I will go to question number three. And have you understood the format of writing name of the SAC previous year assessment year all that? So you can copy the format from the previous questions. Here we will focus on the calculation part. We are required to do residential status determination. Let's do for AY 2122 first. If AY is 2122, that means which PY are we talking about? 2021. So we will focus only on 2021. Go and check what was his number of days stay in India in the year 2021. Can we see that he has left India on September 26, 2020 for joining a company in Nigeria and he has left India for the first time. Means so many years he was always in India. This is the first time that he has left India. Correct? So tell me on 1st April when the year started 2021 was he in India? Yes, because he has left on 26 September. Till September. So, 1st April he was there in India. no? So, we will start counting days from April. How many days in April? Be clear and avoid making mistake. We are talking about the year 2021. Okay. Then part 2 will be part 2 will be 21-22. Question is asking us to solve both. He has left India when? Means this part of the year he was in India and this part of the year he was not in India. So when you start checking from April, my question is April, he was in India or outside India? So you will take how many days in April? 30 days. Now behave like a matured audience and continue with me. Next, month of May. 31. June. 30. July, August, September, and September has 30 days but he was in India only till 26 and his outgoing day we will count. Huh? I have already told you incoming day, outgoing day has to be counted and after this can I say he has left means October, November, December, Jan, Feb, March, everything is zero. We have to stop here. What was his stay in India during that year? 179. Now, more than the answer part, focus on the discussion part. Has he satisfied the 182 condition? No. 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 If that was satisfied, then like the previous two questions, we would have stopped. We would have said that done, finished. Assessi is a resident. If this was less than 60, then directly our answer would have been non resident. If this was more than 182, then directly our answer will be resident. Whenever this figure is from 60 to 181, that means 182 is not fulfilled, then what is the second condition that can be making an SSE resident that is current year 60 days and last 4 years 365 days. Correct or no? Is he satisfying 60 days in the current year? Yes. And he is leaving India for the first time. So before this, every year he was in India only. So will he be satisfying last 4 years, 365 days? And therefore the SSC will become? Popad Durantam. Now saying does not make sense. You should have said when I asked you. Focus please, ladies and gentlemen. He gets an employment offer from a company in Nigeria. That means Mr. X, a citizen of India who was living in India is going outside for what reason or purpose? Come on. For the purpose of employment. And because he falls in that exception, therefore, can I say he stays less than 182 days? Condition 2 is not applicable. Why is condition 2 not applicable? Because going abroad for the purpose of and therefore the SSE is ladies and gentlemen topic finish and in non-resident there is no further checking. For those two exceptional cases it can be only if you are 
having 182 days condition 1 criteria condition 2 not applicable is this understood yes sir this question has asked also ay 2223 that means this time which py 21 23 the question is in front of you for those of you all who don't have the pdf or the printouts in with you i am putting the question in front of you because the second assessment year 2223 you will be solving on your own and i am giving you 30 seconds to do it question is here you please solve it on your own yeah why first of all this part is very clear so you don't have to check april may june july they have already given you number of days of 21 22 is that clearly visible to all the students yes sir so what is his stay in india for 21 22 176 days. days and will you check 63 65 no therefore he is non resident why we are not checking because he falls under exception because he falls under exceptions same reason understood you know there were two ways in which i could have done this one way was i could have first taught you residential status only little and solved these questions then taught you exceptions where condition 2 is not applicable and then i come to this question but the fun of doing questions will be lost because if i teach you exception and then i directly bring to this question that means you know that the question is on the exception but when we complete everything and come to the questions is your mind alert enough to check why is this question an exception because the assc has left india for the purpose of employment and therefore 6365 is not applicable only wait if the income was exceeding 15 lakh rupees then we would have applied that 6365 condition modified version 12365 but that is applicable only for whom for the person of indian origin who is coming to india for visit so this assc does not fall in that category also because he is not coming to india for the purpose of visit second if you are not a resident in any other country then india will consider you as a resident that also requires income to be more than 15 lakh rupees so that is also not applicable which is why clearly given to you that is income is only 1 lakh and consequently that deemed resident concept is also not applicable this assc is thus a non resident and the question here by comes to an end have you understood question number 3 and by the way question 3 is anyways completely solved for you with proper format so there will be no problem major target of yours while taking screenshots should be solution to question number 1 and question number 2 let's go ahead question number 4 yes moin Now don't use your brain here and say that sir sir Pollock has retired from cricket. No no instead of Mr X they are using Pollock. Name can be anything. Okay he. Ha ha बराबर English. Very good. What is the question asking you to do? Find out the residential status. You all know how to write the heading now. I'll do this for one last time. Okay. Tell me previous year. Assessment year twenty two twenty three. What is the question asking you to do? Every time you determine residential status, first you will always check stay in the current year. Because if the stay in the current year is more than one eighty two or less than sixty, then you don't have to perform anything else. So first check stay in the current year, and it's a one line question. He comes to India every year for. Nee nee, for how many days? So every year his number of days in India is going to be one zero two. That means can I say twenty one twenty two? It is one zero two days. That means he is not fulfilling basic condition one. Yes. 
इस बेसिक कंडीशन टू एप्लीकेबल नाउ डोंट मेक द मिस्टेक विच यू मेड लास्ट टाइम इन क्वेश्चन वाई बिकॉज ही इज नॉट अ सिटीजन कमिंग फॉर द विजिट सिटीजन और पी आई ओ कमिंग फॉर विजिट और गोइंग आउटसाइड ही इज अ फॉरन नेशनल वो इज कमिंग एंड प्लेइंग क्रिकेट इयर इज कंडीशन टू एप्लीकेबल येस इन कंडीशन टू फर्स्ट पार्ट इज सिक्सटी डेज हैज यू ऑलरेडी फुलफिल्ड दैट वॉट इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ कंडीशन टू तो वॉट वी विल डू इज चेक लास्ट फोर ईयर्स एंड गुड थिंग अबाउट दिस एस एस इज एवरी ईयर नंबर ऑफ डेज इज सेम सो अवर सॉल्विंग पार्ट बिकम्स इजी नो वॉट इज द स्टे ऑफ फोर ईयर्स कैन आई सिंपली से वन जीरो टू इन टू फोर दैट इज फोर हंड्रेड एंड एट सो प्लीज पे अटेंशन इज द करंट ईयर सिक्सटी डेज और मोर इज द लास्ट फोर ईयर्स थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव और मोर देर फॉर दी एस एस सी इज रेजिडेंट is that understood yes sir very good but once we get the answer as resident we have to go further in the previous question our answer was non resident non resident question is over if the answer is resident tell me what do we have to do after this now ordinary and not ordinary for ordinary how many conditions we have to check two and out of the two how many we have to fulfill both yes or no yes Every time, no. I have been checking last seven years, seven years, seven years. This time, let's do that second condition first. Check last ten years. What is the requirement in last ten years? Minimum two. He has to be resident. Correct. I don't know how much maths you have studied in life, or whether you are good in maths or no. If this calculation is applicable for twenty one, twenty two. and he comes to india for 102 days every year that means can i say 2021 20, 1920 20, 18 19 17 all the 10 years the same conditions are going to be applicable and same is the calculation just tell me whether you agree and understand that he is a resident in all the 10 years forget about it. our requirement is only how much our requirement is only our requirement is only 2 years our requirement is only 2 years and he is a resident on in all the 10 years that means can i say all years he is a resident which is greater than or equal to 2 means is this condition fulfilled tell me what is the second condition Tell me what is his stay for seven years in India? What is his seven years stay? In? How did you get it? Every year hundred and two. Seven years will be seven hundred and fourteen. Condition satisfied or dissatisfied? But one is satisfied. No, out of two, any one? No. For ordinary, it has to be both. and because this condition is dissatisfied we come to a conclusion that the assc is non resident if he was non resident then this step will not be performed he is a resident but r n o and you know why i purposely did the 10 years condition first normally we always do 7 years then 10 years 7 years then 10 years but why i did 10 years first you know because if i would have done this first and this answer so immediately we would have stopped but i wanted you to check both conditions in exam if you do this first you get this answer you write draw, uh, not ordinary and you don't check 10 years it's okay you will get your marks because anyways both conditions have to be fulfilled but in class as a student i want you to check everything and because i want you to check everything we performed both steps have you understood yes sir okay very good shall we go ahead next question yes, shall we question number 5 yes. please Yes. 
now see 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 after doing questions difficult ones like question number 3 and 4 which were not so easy a question like this is an insult to your talent and caliber so let me discuss till this question with you can i say first thing current year 68 days is given if this was 182 then we would have stopped here if this is 68 then we will check last four years that's 55 70 80 and 140 what is the total of last four years what's your answer the question is solved what's your answer why because he is neither fulfilling 182 of current year nor he is fulfilling see fulfillment of 60 alone is not enough with 60 last four years 365 also has to be done correct or no but is not fulfilling that and therefore the assc is a non resident and because it's a solved question no so we are not wasting time because if we save time like this we get time to solve more and more questions in class very easy question is it understood yes sir very good question number 6 please they have played very clever years they said in 21 22 he came to india for one year please pay attention in 21 22 he came to india for one year and your brain will tell sir one year means full year and full year means 182 day fulfilled but check carefully in the year 21 22 he did not come on first april for one year on which date he came to india and when we are checking if you understand 21 22 we have to stop our calculation on 31st march next year's april may june july we cannot check that for 21 22 that will be taken next year no so current year we have to check from april to march that means if we are checking for 21 22 that means we have to check from 1st april 21 to 31st march 22 first tell me yes or no we have to stop here even if after this he was in india for the rest of his life that is irrelevant our calculation stops here is that clear and in this period his stay in india started from which date first november so can i say november 30 days yes december 31 jan 31 feb 30 or 31 Huh? And sometimes it is twenty nine also. Be careful. Sometimes you can be tested on that also. If this February is two thousand twenty two, please pay attention. This February is two thousand twenty two, so it is going to be twenty eight days. But if it is two thousand twenty or twenty four or twenty eight or two thousand sixteen or twelve, every four years. I hope you have studied this much in school. Every four years, February has got one day extra. Okay. So, what is his stay in India for twenty one twenty two? One fifty one. Is it one hundred and fifty one? Yes, Now listen. This is less than one eighty two, but still more than sixty. So we check last four years, but before that. our last four years applicable he is a us citizen he is not an indian citizen who has left india for working purposes us citizen so does he fall in any of the exceptions citizen or pi or anything so answer my question is 6365 applicable to him yes it is if 6365 is applicable and current year it is between 60 and 181 that means can i say we will have to go and check last four years which are the last four years 2020 is this right everything is given in the question you don't have to bother at all 2021 check check the full question it's a one line question mr z left india 
on 2nd July 2019. This is which year? And I told you in the first uh, day itself when I explained previous year, yesterday, when I explained previous year assessment here, that you need to, ladies and gentlemen, you need to read a date and identify a year. This is 1920. That means he had already left India in 1920. And after 1920, he came directly in 2122. That means in the year 2021. Come on. He was not there in India at all. Do you agree with this? Now let's talk about the year 1920. At the beginning of 1920, he was in India because he left in July. So in April, he was in India. Yes or no? Yes. yes. In May, he was in India. June, he was in India. And July 2nd, he left. So we will count those two days, no? Because outgoing day also counted. Can I say April, May, June and two days of July? Are you understanding? See, blindly copying is not enough. Are you understanding what I am talking? What is happening in class? So, can I say 1920 will be April, May, June and two days of July? What is that total? 93 is it? Very good. And if he left India for the first time after 10 years, that means before that, 1819, 17, 18, what was his position? 1819, where was he? India. Full year in India? 17, 18, where was he? Full year in India? Ek baat batao, listen, listen, listen. We are unnecessarily wasting time. 18, 19, 17, 18, they single-handedly, single-handedly are fulfilling the requirement. Is he fulfilling the requirement of 365 days? Yes. yes. Therefore, he is a... Even if you don't take the total of these four years, very clearly, he is a... Resident. At least till now he is a resident. Now we will perform our second step. What is our second step to decide whether SSE is ordinarily resident or not ordinarily resident? What will you check for ordinary, not ordinary? Last seven years. Ladies and gentlemen, observe carefully. These are how many years? Four years. That means 7 years will bring 3 more years and all the years he was in India because last 10 years he was in India. Do you see here itself he is fulfilling 730 days? That means can I say last 7 years easily he has fulfilled the condition of? It is going to be much more than required because in 4 years itself it is completing 730. Much more than 730 in fact. And what about the next condition? Last 10 years if you don't want to check all the 10 years. Can I say these two years itself? 182, 182 is being fulfilled. In fact, this year also 63, 65 is being fulfilled. So he is a resident of minimum two years. And thus, after satisfying both additional conditions, the SSE becomes resident and ordinarily resident. Is that understood? Let the question be having any kind of complication. If your concept is clear, if the things, the theory taught in class is clear to you, the toughest of questions will become easy for you. If you observe, so these are all institute questions from study material, mock test, RTP, we have picked up all the questions from there. If your concept is clear, you will be able to solve anything and everything. Correct? Eh? Let's go ahead. Very good. Let's go ahead. Question number. 7 please Indian cricketer What are the conditions you will check current year 182 days or current year 60 and last 4 years 365. Why we, Why we will not check? Why we will not check? Why we will not check? That means 6365. 6365? Not applicable? 
the only condition applicable is going to be 182 and you can check check and now i am doing it here only very easy in fact check the solved answer only april may june july august and september we will take 24 no the day he left will also be counted that total will come to 177 days is he fulfilling 182 no and 6365 not applicable and therefore the assessee is yes. once again this question tested you on the exception if you know the concept you will never go wrong understood very good so residential status maybe was difficult or anything when you are learning the theory while solving the questions and institute questions do you agree that you are getting comfort in doing residential status okay continue question number eight please Now, if you focus carefully, ekdam carefully, if you focus, then you realize that initially the question is telling you he has left India for the purpose of employment. The moment you read this, that he has left India for employment, one thing will come to your mind, which you have been very smartly answering. What? That 6365 is not applicable. But your institute has played a game with you. This he did in which year? 1920. Now onwards you will never say 2019 or 20 or 21. You always have to say 1920, 18, 19, 17, 18. Which year he left India? 1920. And we are determining residential status of? 21. What has he done in 2122? In 2122, now tell me, this date, when he came back to India, in 2122, when he came back to India, for what purpose he came in India, first of all? He got a new job in India. Means he has left his England job and he has come. He again came to India after taking employment in India on 10th January 2000. 22 means the story goes like this in 2019 he got a job in england he left india for employment in 21 22 this is in 21 22 10 january our exam year he came back to india and now answer this question in 21 22 is he an outgoing person or incoming person he is an incoming person so the first exception person living for employment that is not applicable that was applicable in 1920 when he left India. Now that is not applicable because now he is not an outgoing person. He is an incoming person. And for incoming person also, there is a rule that if you come to India for the purpose of visit, visit, then not applicable. But what has he come to India for? For employment means for the purpose of earning. That means he does not fall in the visit category. Focus what I am asking you. See if you understand. First, is he an outgoing person or incoming person? In 21-22, incoming. That means first exception of 63-65 not applicable. And for incoming person, if he comes for visit, then you fall in exception. Is he coming for visit? No, for employment. That means second exception also? Not applicable. That means 63-65. Shall be considered. He is not falling in both exceptions. Are we clear? Then we will consider only 182. If 2122 was the year in which he left for employment, like he did in 1920, no? If 2122 was the year in which he is leaving for employment, then again we will not consider 63-65. But what is happening in 21-22? He is coming for earning. Means he is not an outgoing person and he is not a visitor. He is coming to India for earning and thus 63-65 will be applicable. Are we clear? This was question number 8. 
let's do a little properly okay first of all what is the name of the assessee mr y he is coming to india for what purpose employment purpose therefore can i say both conditions applicable to the assessee check his stay in the year 21 22 he came to india for the first time on 10th of january that means he stayed in india only during the months of jan feb and march if you are a good student then tell me number of days of january 79 number of days of january january i am asking 22 january he came on 10th so how many days you will count there are two answers which students are giving some are saying 21 some are saying 22 and only one of them is right so please understand 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 not counted from 10th just tell me one thing 10th january has to be counted or not counted counted that means out of 31 days we will exclude only 9 days those who got 21 have actually excluded his incoming day also which is wrong incoming day has to be counted here it won't make any difference because this is 22 and whether it is 80 or 81 it does not make a difference because you have already covered your 60 days but in some other case it can make a difference are we clear and thus be very careful that incoming day has to be included what is his stay in the current year 81 days if it is 81 days and both conditions are applicable that means can i say we have to check last four years also to check now when did he leave india in 1920 he left 1920 he left okay that means can i say like the previous question 2021 he was not in india at all 2021 he was not in india 1920 he left that means april he was in india may he was in india and i think he left india on 1st of june but before that before that he was in india for how many years 15 years so very clearly can we once again say that 18 19 and 17 18 both years it is 365 365 because first time he is leaving after 15 years that means can i say first of all he is resident and other than the resident part the last two out of last 10 years and the 730 everything is being fulfilled so you can if you want copy the other two conditions from here and you can clearly observe this and say the ssc is resident and ordinarily resident this sum i am only explaining to you solution is there in the book the full solution is properly given to you here okay so 062 365 365 we also got that no 062 365 365 so the proper presentation you will get from the solved question here have you understood the discussion that we are doing the determination of residential status uh doing the question like this and giving you the solution gives me time to do more questions with you if you want me to solve everything in proper format and then do it like this then i will have to cut down on number of questions but my experience tells me that doing more questions is better than showing you the presentation to all our chartered accountancy students you all have this much brain that how to present the answer with once first solution also i gave no mr x p y a y with that or all the solved questions here you will be able to get the presentation we need to do more practice and that is why we will focus on solving more questions in class well with this one part of the chapter that is questions till question number 
questions are over that means with so many questions are you developing some comfort on residential status of individual yes, yes? everyone okay i will continue with the questions uh, i am yet to do scope of total income with you so if you talk about question number 9 this is on page number 14 this is on scope of total income that's part 2 of the chapter i have not yet taught you part 2 okay so question 9 i cannot do right now Question number 10. This is on residential status of HF. That means which is the only question that we have skipped till now? Question number 9. Which is based on scope of total income. Which we can which we can do once we are uh, done with that uh, a table of scope. I, there is a table that I will teach you. Part 2 of the chapter. Orally you all have understood. Resident has to pay tax on world income. And non-resident has to pay tax on Indian income that you all have understood but proper format may I will teach you then question number 9 will become our practice for now we will come to question number 10 which is residential status of HUF this we have studied no so you are in a position to answer please read the question the winner of an of Hmm. Means if you focus carefully, question is asking you to do determination of residential status of which SSE, the Karta, Mr. F, or the HUF. Both. See, see, if you want to make life simple, life should be kept simple. You are supposed to do for two that you understood. But can we do one at a time? Because if you do it one at a time, things will be a little comfortable for you. In one at a time, we have an option. We can do Karta first or HUF first. You have brains to understand because we have to do both. There is no rule. There is no rule that you have to do Karta first or HUF first. Okay? There is no rule. But I think it is better to do Mr. F Karta first. Someone in class said HUF first because control and management very easy to determine. Yes. But why am I doing? Achha, by the way, if you do HUF first, no, there is no mistake in that. Huh? There is nothing. You have to do both. There is no mistake in doing HUF first. Then tell me, Moin, why am I doing Karta first? The step 2 of HUF, ordinary, not ordinary, will depend on whether Karta is ordinary, not ordinary. Do you recollect that? And which is why it is always better to do Karta first. Okay. If you observe the data of the Karta, he was born in Kolkata. Means can I say he is person of Indian origin? He comes to India for a visit during 21-22. After 15 years, means one thing is for sure. If you have little common sense, little common sense last four years is zero last seven years is zero last ten years is zero he will not become ordinary for sure but whether he is resident or non-resident if you directly say r n o r you are wrong what if he is a non-resident are you following what if he is a non-resident are you following yes tell me one more thing what is the first step that you will decide for Mr. F? Will you directly decide ordinary, not ordinary? What will you first decide? Resident and non-resident. For which you will check the stay of 21-22? Please wait before you start. I know you have started calculating April to December. I know. No. I need your participation. This is not as easy as you think it is. If this comes to 182, then your answer will be resident. If it does not come to 182, is 6365 applicable? I know last 4 years it is 0. I know last 4 years it is 0. Wait please. I know last 4 years it is 0. So even if applicable, 6365 is not fulfilled. But the question is, is it applicable? not applicable why not applicable because it is person of indian origin 
who is coming to India for the purpose of visit. So not applicable. Unless they give you income. See, they have not given you income whether it is more than 15 lakh or no. So you cannot assume on your own. So only if they give you income, then 12365 will apply. And anyways, that also is not fulfilling because he is coming only after 15 years. Can you see that? And thus, we will check only current year. 6365 is not applicable. Tell me, which date he came to India? 1st of April. 1st April. And he left on 1st December. Means that one day of December has to be counted. That means April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. And one day of December? Total please. 245. Way beyond the required number. Now, now I tell you, Mohin and all other students of the class. Okay. This is 245, no? That means our answer. What you were saying, no, sir, he is RNOR, he is RNOR because he is coming after 15 years. You are right because this is 245. If this was only 45, you know what would have been the answer here? Then your answer, not ordinary, not ordinary, which you were giving will become wrong, no? So, what is your first step always? This. Is he a resident? Yes. But obviously, if you check last 7 or 10, all the years, it is all 0 only, no? Tell me why I am so confidently saying it is all 0. He is after coming after 15 years. Therefore, he is R N O. Is this clear, everyone? And what will be the usage of this? in determining the residential status of HUL. If you directly again say you are making the same mistake. If you directly say, please pay attention, please pay attention. This was that difficult thing in the HUL residential status. So I don't want you to make mistake. This will be used only if we perform step 2 of HUL. What are the two steps? Step 1, resident, non-resident. Step 2, ordinary, not ordinary. Only if we perform step 2, we will use this. But we perform step 2 only if answer to step 1 will come to? So go and check what is your answer to step number 1. The business of the HUF is transacted from USA. And all the policy decisions are taken there. Ladies and gentlemen, the HUF ka control and management wholly outside India and therefore the HUF is. Are you following? And once the HUF is non-resident, do you understand this is of no use? This will be used only if HUF was resident then to decide whether ordinary or not. Otherwise, in a case like this, we don't need this data. Are we clear? All of us? So, that's the end of question 10. We have missed only one question because that's on scope of total income. Which is the only question that we have not done till now? Just one second. Just tell me which is the next page on which you have your question. Oh, file close ho gaya. That PDF. Just give me one second. Huh. Question 9. We have skipped as we have mutually decided. After doing scope of total income, we will continue. Question number 10, we have completed. Yeah. 11. 11 is on page number 7. Yes. We have studied. No. Eight minute. We have studied residential status of company or no? Yes. What is the answer? Indian company will be? 
ऑलवेज रेसिडेंट नो नीड टू चेक एनी थिंग एंड फॉरन कंपनी विल बी रेसिडेंट ओनली इफ पोएम इन इंडिया करेक्ट है एंड एंड नो फर्दर क्लासिफिकेशन इन टू ऑर्डिनरी नॉट ऑर्डिनरी सो क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन प्लीज रीड Do you agree? We have to answer that first. Tell me, is it Indian company or foreign company? Foreign company. Foreign company. Had it been an Indian company, we would have said yes. We agree without checking anything else. But it's a foreign company. In case of foreign company, they are saying the routine decisions are taken in India. But where are the significant? See, in intermediate, they will ask a question like this only. In final, as I told you, you are required to read that circular on poem. Which has been released by CBDT. In intermediate, they will lay down the question very, very clearly like this: Where are the major, the significant, the big decisions taken? Chicago. Chicago. Only the routine decisions are taken in India, and thus, if the major decisions are not taken in India, then the foreign company will be treated as a non-resident. Non and thus, what's your answer? Do you agree? No, no I disagree. This company is a. It is clearly given. This company is a non-resident. understood okay question number 12 is on scope of total income i think 13 is also on scope of total most of the uh, questions that are now left 12 13 14 even 15 16 all of them till 18 which is i think the last question 19 19 is the last question all the questions are actually based on scope of total income there is this one question which is based on continuous discharge certificate okay so i'll do one thing let it be like this we have finished question number 1 to 11 in between we have left only one question so what do we have to do we have to do question number 9 and then 12 onwards the remaining questions that one question on the difficult concept continuous discharge certificate that we have not done so this will also allow me to check tomorrow when i do this question number 18 on continuous discharge certificate are my students taking the revision at home sincerely or no so please make sure that every word that we have taught till now scope of total income we will study tomorrow and we are going to move on to starting of the new chapter exempt income once residential status and scope of total income is over we go to the third chapter exempt income so please make sure every word that we have studied if you revise every day you need to give only 15 minutes during the day but if you don't revise for one week then you will require 2 hours of revision so my humble request if you want to take the subject seriously if you are developing a little liking towards the subject initially it was only theory theory two days of theory two days lecture also majorly theory but over the last one hour when we started doing questions you started getting a little confidence that whatever we are studying in class institute questions answer we are able to solve that means we will be able to solve questions in our exam and get marks if you are getting that confidence if you are developing that liking towards the subject the required part from your side is please do regular revision so that you are able to do justice to all the hard work that you are putting in at this stage we declare the end of today's class